to, really at the last minute in 44 December, quite a lot of Jewish people were taken over here to the Danube. They had to come here to the Danube, they had to undress themselves, and that was December 1944, December. And they had to hold each other's hand, and every second or third person was shot dead. Don't forget, unfortunately, by the Hungarian Nazis. So eventually they pulled each other into the freezing cold water. let's say, integration progress of the Jews here. They never lost their Jewish identity, but they started to feel proud of being Hungarian as well, and not only an isolated Jewish group. And that's why they, they uh, made some gestures, some steps. Uh, two years ago, one delegate, the leader of that par uh, party, had that very silly idea in the parliament, that uh, in the parliament they should make a list of the Jewish delegates for security reasons. Yeah. But you know, even the, the governmental party, uh, uh, which uh, was elected, unfortunately, this year, second time, so four more years, they never stopped that, uh, that uh, anti-Semitism. Not stopping uh, uh, somebody doing something wrong, it means that they support it. This year made a, a really bad step, making a memorial against the Jews. The, uh, I mean, officially, that memorial is um, commemorating uh, all of the all of the people who died innocent uh, during the World War II. Attacked by uh, a big eager representing uh, Germany. Our angel uh, represents Hungary as a very innocent one, but come on, Hungary was not innocent at all, and we were not attacked. But 
we cooperated with them. So it is just denying the responsibility. And all of the Jews here in Hungary and, uh, and the very good, good, high number of the non-Jews protested and still protesting every single day from uh, the 8th of April uh, every single day against that memorial, which is exactly in that Freedom Square, which is in the heart of the city. Mm. So it is really, mm. really bad. Mm, bad and getting worse. Yes.
through in Vienna. Yeah, they have the major votes here in Vienna since the first three elections. small community because Jews are not equal, only rich Jews, only tolerated Jews are allowed to live in Vienna. They become equal in the second half of 19th century, we are in the beginning of 19th century. So if you look, you look at this community, it's not equal, but very important. We have families like Oppenheimer, Wertheimer, Eskeles, Epstein, Efusi, Rothschild, Biedermann, really big families. So when they go to the emperor and say to him, we would like to build a synagogue, he cannot possibly say no to them because he needs them just as well. So he says, yes, but you have two conditions. The first condition and the major condition is you build the house with the facade not showing the function of the house. You are not equal, you cannot possibly show yourself up being quasi uh, uh, proud. The second condition is to choose and commission the best architect. Josef Kornhäusl is the best architect, beginning of 19th century, and I think you can see it yourself. Mm -hmm. The house is very, very, very beautiful. This house is being opened 1826, so you see how old the house is. We need a cantor, not? A cantor should have a nice voice. A cantor who works in Vienna needs an excellent voice, like his voice. <laughs> of course, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you ask us, of course you ask yourself why. Look at Vienna, beginning of 19th century. We still have Beethoven alive, Schubert is alive, Johann Strauss' father is alive, and Franz Liszt is also alive. So you see, with this background, they chose really one of the best. And this is Salomon Sulzer. He is Josef Kornreus, he is führend, wirklich ein führender Architekt, Biedermeier Architektur, einer der schönsten in der Welt. Man kann es schon sagen.
Thank you.